Welcome to the shooting show. This week, newsreader Ruth Burgess tackles a Highland red stag and Robert Bucknell takes us through the night vision, thermal imaging and illuminating options from Pulsar, Yukon and Nightmaster. It's a warm, heady morning in the Highlands and Ruth Burgess will be heading out with Dalness Estate stalker Martin to try for a stag. The mild weather means the rut is not yet in full swing and the stags have been proving hard to locate. Martin takes Ruth to the range so she can familiarise herself with the Merkel Helix. I think to put the safety back off, let's just push, push it up, it push, push that down. button. So I'll keep you right through mm -hmm. the process anyway. Okay. That's quite a light trigger too. Mm -hmm. If you want to just have a wee feel for the trigger. Yeah. <clears throat> Perfect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, just to pull her straight back. There we go. <laughs> right, I'll show that. Okay. Ah, that's not bad at all. Okay. Very good. Yeah, so just pull it straight back. That's you. Ready. Satisfied with Ruth's shot on the target, Martin takes them for a spy from the vehicle. Nothing is showing, so he makes the decision to start heading up the glen, spying along the way to see if anything suitable is below the cloud line. Since this year the weather's been that good, does it? Everything's on the tops. Mm -hmm. So we started off uh, at the little cottage by the road bridge um, on Dalness Estate and um, to be honest weather conditions were pretty good this morning. It was um, actually shirt sleeve weather for a little bit, um, you know, gradually got a bit cooler as, we'd, uh, as we worked our way up onto Ben Caitlin um, and, um, you know, started to, um, started to drizzle a little bit and the mist sort of came in. And uh, as you can probably tell, gradually got worse. It's been blowing a hoolie up here, um, and we're pretty wet now. <laughs> uh, we'll see if you come down the skyline there, and there's a wee bump. Yeah. Quite low down, there's just pines just above it there. Yeah. A nice grassy face. Mm -hmm. It slopes up, and then the sort of rocks start. Mm -hmm. You're talking the other side of the burn there? Other yeah. side of that burn, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's a nice, well, the, Nice slopey face. In fact, see where that sandbank is on the face there. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just go up, sort of one o'clock, um, there's a big, quite a big rock face, very dark, and then you know a good patch of grass, and then below there's another shiny rock face. Mm -hmm. Just quite low down on the hill, we're just where the cliffs start. Well, he's just mm -hmm. in that sort of green runner between the two p patches of slab rock, just by himself. He spots a stag on an opposing face, but from the distance they're at, there's no way to tell if it's a shootable beast. The only thing for it is to stalk in closer.
Martin sets up the rifle in case the stag will offer a shot, but on closer inspection he turns out to be too young. Unfortunately the stag is occupying the path round Ben Caitlin Martin wants to take, so we'll have to be moved on. Um, we saw quite, well, we didn't really see that many deer. Um, we, when we were starting off we saw one up um, on ben, ben Caitlin and sort of headed uh, headed up to try and get to that one. Um, when we stalked into it, um, after crawling about, it was um, it turned out to be uh, not really a shootable stag, it was quite young, um, so we, we let, left him. We continued on um, walking across Ben Caitlin and um, came across a couple of other um, groups, um, but not really shootable stags, um, quite a few hinds as well with them. A second group of deer are spotted, but these are a lot more wary than the first stag, and the approach will need to be a slow belly crawl through the wet stuff. There is a stag in attendance, but the deer have decided something is not right and head off over the skyline. Undaunted, Martin keeps heading on round the hill, hoping their luck will change. Um, yeah, so we just thought we'd make our way across and head for um, head for Glen Caitlin, um, sort of on our way home. Um, and uh, this was the first um, suitable stag we came across, so we uh, stalked into him. Um, very quietly. Um, he was with a, a couple of hinds and uh, also another stag that was uh, lying down there. And uh, yeah, not, not too bad a shot really. It was um, uh, pretty straightforward, just uh, crept in by the side of a rock and um, got him a uh, pretty clean shot really. Stag is dead on his hooves but runs out of sight on adrenaline alone. After waiting a few more moments, Martin and Ruth head off after their fallen quarry. He was stone dead by the time we got here then. Stone dead, yeah. Clean kill. Uh, well, he's in pretty good condition really. Um, he's at 10 point, he's got quite a small head on him. Um, it, was quite, it was quite a tricky stag to sort of age, but um, a close inspection I thought he was just in his prime, so I thought maybe taking me some most shootable stag we've seen today. Um, and going by his teeth as well, he's about, I'd say, age of about eight year old, um, which is basically we concentrate on shooting stags from about eight years old upwards. Um, he's, he's in good condition, he's just not quite starting to smell yet, so he's, uh, he isn't thinking about starting to rot anything. High altitude success at the Stags for Ruth there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by gunstar.co.uk. Shoots are on the alert after an outbreak of bird flu, but official advice is that the risk to public health is very low. After an outbreak of avian influenza in East Yorkshire, the Food Standards Agency confirmed there was no food safety risk as a result. Basque told shooters and gamekeepers to play their part in ensuring the outbreak doesn't spread, by following strict rules about biosecurity and the movement of birds. Don't miss the next issue of Modern Gamekeeping for the full story. A new report on wildlife crime in Scotland is out, and it says there's still a serious threat from poaching and other crimes. Poaching, raptor poisoning and freshwater pearl mussel incidents were reported as being up in the previous year, though other forms of crime, including badger crimes and bat persecution, were down. 
Most poaching offences were recorded in salmon and freshwater fisheries, with game poaching falling sharply. Scotland's Environment Minister Paul Wheelhouse said wildlife crime was still taking place at unacceptable levels. New firearms regulations in Northern Ireland have been shelved. The Department of Justice had originally tabled plans to make firearms dealers establish electronic registers, in line with the EU Firearms Directive. But after meeting Basque last month, politicians decided that police forces would keep the registers instead. Basque said it was delighted that the DOJ had listened to its concerns and taken a pragmatic approach. The Beretta gun room has extended its presence in Harrods. The famous department store recently restructured its fifth floor, and now Beretta's concession has a much larger area within the floor's sports fashion department. The only licensed gun room in Harrods, the Beretta display now includes the new 486 designed by Mark Newson. And finally, there's a new resource online for shooting clubs. British Shooting's Club Development Toolkit is a free online guide to growing the sport, governing a club and securing investment. Covering clay and target shooting, the toolkit includes sections on recruiting volunteers, working with organisations and partners and improving club facilities. Check it out for yourself at britishshooting.org.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Right, well, we're going to a new piece of ground tonight. Uh, Nigel's coming along in a little while. I think he's um, chasing some wildlife at the moment. That's unusual. And this piece of ground we haven't been to for a while. Chap that exercises his Labrador there says there's a fox or two there, so we hope to have some luck. So we're going to try out some new kit. And this is the um, Yukon Photon 5x42, which uh, rather took the market by storm. There's been various other digital solutions and they all work and they're pretty good and everybody I've spoken to whether it's a night sight whether it's one of these whether it's a 500 700 series they all seem to work extremely well people are very pleased with them add on the torch this is the Nightmaster Venom which I'm just trying out good piece of kit and they just have taken over because you can use it more or less in daylight, certainly in the evening, works really well. And then into the night and you can spot a fox and deal with it 100, 150 yards. And because they don't have any signature out there except for the lamp and the occasional one will spot that, away you go. So you're using white light and that, which is not a bad combination. But now we're moving on to the good old thermal imager TI as a viewer. This is an HD, Pulsar HD 38, and I know my pal has had one of these for a year, I think, and I've been trialling it, and yep, it's a good piece of kit. You see things that you just wouldn't see otherwise. Half the thing with any animal you're after is seeing it in the first place, and then you can do something about it, whether you tiptoe out for, round for wind or just decide to give it a few squeaks and give it a call and see what happens. And there's no other signature. So if you're going to buy something, get hold of something like this to start with, because you can then turn over to this chap and you don't need anything that's terribly brilliant because by that time you've spotted the fox out at four or 500 yards or whatever, you've brought it in, you then swap over. Now the other thing that's a problem, or can be a problem, as long as you've got to be aware of, is you're getting a lot of light out the back of the tube. Lost your night vision. So you can either use this and then go to an ordinary tube, ordinary scope, or you use this and of course you're getting bright picture coming out of that. So it matches it. It's not the end of the world when you swap over. But of course you take this away and you've got to be a little careful because you need one eye that can see where you just about fall down a hole or whatever because it's, you've lost all night vision with this one. So we're going out to use all this kit, give it a try out and uh, we'll see how we get on and report back. We've put the fox box on the back of the pickup truck and we'll place James in the back and cool him down on the way over there because there's only two seats in the front. <laughs> Nigel will then be in the back as well. I will drive. I might well use the lamp as we're driving around because it's 
useful, you don't fall in the ditch and you can see what you're doing. And there's lots of lights around there anyway, we're close to a town, so the foxes are fairly used to it. But we did have one fox, we've still got one fox there, who's quite lamp shy. See whether we catch up with him, whether he's made a mistake in the meantime and has now become a, a little rug in the road or one of nature's speed bumps. And try all our different bits of kit. I think Nigel's going to have the digital on the top of his rifle and see how that goes. I might just sit, sit up and try the thermal and do some cooling. So we should be fairly covered or covert or what's the word? Anyway, hopefully the fox won't know we're there. I think we'll move further down the field and uh, have a call so that we can find. So we pressed on and went along by the river. And then two sets of eyes looking at us, but from a long way through through a hedge on the other side of the next field. One seemed to go up the field and the other one seemed to go along it. And what they were up to, I don't know, but the wind was slightly wrong and the amount of water there was in the bottom of the valley was ridiculous. through this gap here mm -hmm. and then run down the other side. <laughs> we just sort of paddled our way out of that, went up to get the wind right, having done a bit of a curve around the field, set ourselves up, used the thermal imager and we saw a, a little blot down the bottom of the field that looked very suspicious, the odd rabbit and hare about the place. And then it started moving up the field. We started getting excited at this point, so I started squeaking. And I would imagine it's 100 and something or other yards away. Not too far. And it came steaming down the field. It turned around to have another look. By that time, Nigel was well sorted out. And as luck would have it, it was in a safe direction, which was good because when you're surrounded by roads and urban areas, it's not very easy. And it turned out to be, what was it, 80 yards, something like that. And uh, down it went. Good heavy thump. Right here. I started to go back across the field and we saw where I saw the flash of eye the first time at the bottom of the next door farm. We looked through and Nigel had caught the flash of eye, or quite how he, he saw it anyway. It must have been 400, 400, 450 yards. And I looked at the thermal imager and I, again I could see two or three rabbits out in the field and I could see the fox up against the back hedge. And so we put ourselves right for the wind, pulled, pulled round and put our backs to a, a barn this time. So we did actually have a little bit of camouflage and started squeaking, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, around the end of a solid fence, came the fox, ran through the 
nettles and arrived in the field, started to come towards us, looked at us and went, not too sure about this, swapped ends and hopped straight back through the hedge again. Now by this time, Nigel and everybody was hunkered down a little quieter this time. Won't say any more than that. And I started squeaking again and the fox jumped through the hedge and presented itself um, very neatly for Nigel to squeeze the trigger. We had the camera on the thermal that time. But it does what it says on the tin. You look across the fields and we've got it in white hot so all the little animals show up. If you couldn't find it from here, it's like someone's if turned swing, the lights on. If you swing the other way, you can see where you hit it. Can you see the <laughs> residual heat and pieces? Yeah. But as a spotting device, absolutely brilliant. Because you're sitting there, you can just pan backwards and forwards. And if anything starts coming towards you, the problem is a little bit, you have to work out the communication between yourself and the rifleman and I think it makes it much easier if you've got two people on board, one to keep scanning and the other one to do the shooting because not only to pick them up and give them a line of where the fox is coming in from but there might be another one, especially if you've got cubs around the place, you can go back and keep an eyes out to your rear while the rifleman's dealing with the one that they can, you can see in front. That's always a, a question of keeping your eyes open and being able to scan and the thermal certainly allows you to do that. And a lot safer than having something fitted on a rifle where you're running backwards and forwards and pointing it into places. And it's heavy, it's not easy to do, whereas this little chap you can just sit there and scan and see everything that's going on. But if you're used to using any form of night vision, the old tube one, you it gave you a different picture, but you still had the idea of being able to pick up what your eye was showing you and to interpret it. And it's very much the same, but better. Whereas before you were seeing darker outlines and trying to pick it out amongst cover. Now you're just looking through cover and if the fox is there, that will do. But yes, the horses again were... Mm, they were a good 400 and you could see the legs underneath them and bits and pieces stuck out of you know, normal horse architecture. And so there's no, no way you could miss to what it was. And again, if you were shining a lamp across there, you couldn't see them. So from the safety point of view, you could actually look and see what the background was the other side of the valley. You could count, I think we got up to five horses standing there and you had an idea of the distance and whether it was safe and so that helps quite a lot it makes you a bit more reassured about taking a shot which is good well that's it for this week thanks for watching Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.